ओम ज्ञान चिरन भस्य ज्ञानं जनशलाक चक्षुर्मिलितं येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः या दी अपीयरेंस डे ऑफ भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रोपर we say appearance we don't say birthday we say birthday about birthday and then comes death day we say that about some ordinary person of course the soul is eternal na jayate mriyate va kadachit the soul has neither birth nor death but the ah uh, birth of a conditioned soul it means there's a particular phase of maya connected with that person just like they say ganti jayanti actually this word jayanti should only be used for krishna it is a great offense to use it for a conditioned soul like ganti so the point is that the person who is considered as gandhi had a beginning and an end the birthday when he was born and then the death day when he was shot dead and after that there's no more mohandas gandhi that same soul will be born somewhere else in some other place with some other name maybe human body maybe not human body <laughs> but krishna even before supposedly being born as the son of devaki was always existing in that same transcendental form ajopi sanave atma bhutana mishvaro pi san prakritim swam adhishthaya sambhavam yatma maya ya krishna says i am not born in the ordinary way of a person because i am always existing krishna's form is not a product of the modes of material nature it is eternal it is always existing so before krishna appeared as the son of devaki 5000 years ago he existed in that particular form as that particular form and after his so called disappearance he continues to exist in the same form so great liberated devotees like bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur have the same quality they are not conditioned souls who are born in this world due to their karmic reaction but they come to this world to execute the mission of the lord on his order etad ishanam ishasya prakriti stopitad gunai yujjate etad atma sat mm yujjate etad atma stai now i'm going to in the last line ah yatha ba so you know Anyway the meaning is that the supreme lord he comes into this material nature but he's not affected by the modes of material nature so his devotees are of the same quality that they come into this world but they are not affected by the modes of material nature so people who are in maya who are foolish <coughs> they think that the birthdays of people like mohandas gandhi and ambedkar and all they think this is very important although they are also just bewildered souls who cannot ultimately help anyone mm-hmm. but uh, elevated personalities they understand that the appearance in this world of krishna and his devotees that is the only thing which can actually bring any benefit to the world so it is a symptom of the foolishness and misfortune of the people of kali yoga that they don't know the name of bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur there are very few people who know that name actually when he came to chennai he came a few times but uh, he was greeted with a big reception on one occasion especially Mm, he visited quite a few places in what is now constituted as the state of Tamil Nadu at least the places that i can recall now are chennai as said madras at shri parambadur in uh, coimbatore uti he spent quite some time there one summer right in udama how do you say udaga udaga mandalam then uh, madurai Sri Rangam Kanyakumari 
And these are the places I know that he visited. So he was uh, he was well known and respected, at least among the you know, among many educated and uh, religiously minded people in this part of India. Like I say, there was a huge reception for him in Chennai. I think it was 1932. I'm not sure. I can't. That time it was the Madras presidency. That time under British rule, the India was divided into four what they call presidency. So that was what was it? Madras, Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta. I think it was. So, so the governor of the Madras presidency, he was the chief speaker at the ceremony for opening the uh, Goryamat in, in Madras. So he was well known and there are many people in history who have been well known and then they're forgotten. But it is our duty as his disciplic followers to make sure that people know about him and don't forget him. A.B. Josh Gushuk Tribhuvan, we've seen, his, now let his glories be broadcast throughout the three worlds. So actually the demigods, they also appreciate the position of a great devotee. Their position is not anything like as exalted as that of the demigods. Well, their position is not anything like that of the devotees. People are mad after worshipping demigods. But the demigods' position is not nearly as exalted as that of the pure devotees. There is one incident in which one disciple of Srila Prabhupada asked him that, Prabhupada, do you go to see the demigods? And Prabhupada became a little angry and said, why should I go to see the demigods? He said, they come to see me. He gave the example, you see, there may be big ministers in the court of the king and people in general, if they want some, if they want something, they go to see the ministers. But someone who's the intimate friend of the king, he doesn't go to see the ministers. Rather, if they want something, they go to see him. So, it is very difficult for us in our uh, low state of consciousness to understand the greatness of a great Vaishnava. Simply by academic advancement, one cannot understand the activities or intentions of a pure devotee. Nor, you see, we, we can speak biographically, but that also, that won't necessarily help us to understand who is Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. <coughs> but that's how people think they can understand. So, uh, if someone wants to do an academic study, PhD, he finds out all the facts and figures and information if you want to study, since we're using the example of Gandhi, we can use the same example. You could find out his date of birth and the date he went to South Africa, what he liked to eat, his daily habits. So this way people, they, they write biographies and they study things. And they get PhDs. But we cannot understand Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur by any such method. We can understand him to some extent that is within the ability of our tiny intelligence by following the method that is given in Bhakti Siddhanta. The method that is given in Bhagavad Gita. Tadvithi pranipatena pariprasnena sevaya upadekshanti te jnanam jnaninas tadvadarshinaha As he himself repeatedly stressed it is impossible to understand anything of the transcendence by any mundane method. The mundane senses and intelligence are by their very nature incapable of perceiving transcendence. So it is a great mistake to try to understand liberated personalities by any material means. And the attempt to do so actually results in our understanding less about them than before we even started. Because it simply increases our illusion. If we think that the person of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur is a lump of flesh and blood produced from another lump of flesh and blood called Bhaktivinoda Thakur, 
then uh, from the very beginning we were offensive. Abhajananti maam urha maanushintana maashutam param bhava majananta mama bhuta maheshwaram. You can translate that if you want. So the same principle applies in relation to Krishna's pure devotees. They can be understood by the process of aradhana, submissive worship. By aparad, by considering them some material product, then uh, we simply go further away from them. The academic scholars, they think, well, we're studying everything in a very fair and neutral way. They think this is the best way to study everything. But their fairness and neutrality, their so-called neutrality or their impartial approach, that is uh, a wrong approach. It's a, they think they're being impartial, but they have accepted as an a priori axiom that they can understand, they can understand at all by their material investigative method. Can you translate that? Okay. Yes. Well, we're talking about Bhaktista and Sarsha Thakur, so you know, it's not baby's subject. <laughs> the, the very attitude from the very beginning is offensive. Although they think they're being neutral and fair and impartial. Their failure to recognize the transcendental position of the Lord and His great devotees is from the very beginning an offense. To treat the Lord and His devotees as some lump of matter that is subject to their scrutiny is also offensive. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur himself wrote a book in a booklet in English called Rai Ramananda, which is about Rai Ramananda, one of the great devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he wrote in the beginning that uh, well, this book is divided into two parts. The first part will satisfy people who are uh, who consider that they can understand anything through their exoteric method. So there it is, in the first part it is written, he was born in such and such a place and so on. This kind of caste he was born in. But the second part, which is the actually important part, that is about what he actually is, who he actually is. So we can say, and it's not untrue, that Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur was born in 1874 in Puri as the son of Bhaktisiddhanta Thakur. That that helps us to form some concept from our crippled uh, perspective because we have no uh, contact with spiritual reality. We can conceive of reality in terms of names and places and dates of this material world. But if we are to understand Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, then we have to understand him through his Bhaktisiddhanta, his teachings. The uh, spiritual master is uh, manifest in two phases. One is Vapu and one is Vani. Vapu means the manifest form. So we can say about Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, you can see the photos, he's quite tall, mostly you'll see him wearing glasses, dressed as a sannyasi. So this is his divine transcendental form, that is called Vapu. So that should be served. His form is still present in Samadhi at Sri Chaitanya Mat in Mayapur. So when you go to Mayapur, you should go there and bow down and circumambulate his Samadhi and ask for blessings. But the, uh, although Vapu is the spiritual master, uh, nevertheless, his manifestation as Vani is more important. Vani means what he says. The cheating gurus, they put more emphasis on the Vapu. <laughs> because Shastra says to serve the Vapu, so they take this as a, to serve the form of the spiritual master, so they take that very seriously. Now, that should not be neglected. But the form of the guru is to be served because he's guru. That means he gives divya upadesham. So what is he saying? What is Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur saying? So what he said, you can get by 
थ्रू भक्ति वेदांत भक्ति सिद्धांत और भक्ति वेदांत दे आर द सेम इफ अ गुरु इज नॉट द सेम एज हिज गुरु देन इज नॉट अ गुरु इफ ही चेंज इज एनीथिंग देन इज नॉट अ गुरु भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद इज गुरु बिकॉज He has given what Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Of course, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his method of presentation was extremely intellectual, not mundane intellectualism, but that which is wholly inspired by Saraswati. His name is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, not this Saraswati of the material world. There is Shuddha Saraswati and Dushta Saraswati. Should Shuddha Saraswati is the uh, manifest. She is Vak. She is Vani. She is the manifestation of the Vedas of the Supreme Lord. She is an expansion of Radharani, and she is manifest as the great devotees, uh, as their Vani, as they as they reveal Krishna. So Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada presented the same subject matter, but in an easier manner, according to the need of the persons they were preaching to, and also according to their own personalities. Guru is none different from his guru, in as much as they present the same message, and they have the same purpose, but there are differences also. Not difference of substance, but difference of the difference of personality. So we could say that our own Shila Prabhupad, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupad, although one hundred percent serious about presenting Krishna consciousness, was also uh, very joyful in his presentation in many ways. He he communicated the. Bliss or, or the happiness of serving Krishna. No, no. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Now I'm talking. Bhakti Siddhanta Swami Thakur was. He certainly also presented the bliss of the spiritual world, but his uh, exterior representation was always very grave, very deep. We don't. I, at least I've never come across any. Anecdote about him in which he's in what you could say a light mood. Even sometimes he was joking, but that joking was also only for presenting some deep Krishna conscious point or for cutting some Maya. Just like one of his uh, one so-called disciple left him to go and do some so-called higher bhajan, and he wrote a letter. To uh, Saraswati, he addressed him that you you come and we can do bhajan together. So Bhakti Sudan Sarsar Thakur sarcastically commented that maybe he's already pregnant due to his contact with Krishna, because these people with their so-called higher bhajan imagine themselves to be gopis. So extremely intense mood, which was. Manifest even from his very early age, as I said, he was born as the son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He was also I mean, these these are charyas. These are persons who it's very difficult even to speak anything about them or even think about them because they're so exalted. So. Superficially, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur appeared to be the son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, but he never thought of his of, of Shila Bhakti Vinod Thakur as my father. There was never any mundane relationship. He always saw Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his fully spiritual position. Ordinary people saw Bhakti Vinod Thakur as a as a moral government servant and a very religious man. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur understood that he he never saw him like that. He understood he is a resident of the spiritual world, a servant of Radharani. So uh, superficially, this young boy he appeared to be the son of Bhakti Nanda Thakur. 
who was, yeah, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur appeared in Puri, where Bhakti Rodhaka in his supposedly secular life was in the position of magistrate, which was uh, actually a very high position in the government at that time. And uh, that was the highest position anyone in that in that line of the civil service could go, any non-British. So as magistrate in Puri, the Jagannath Temple administration was also under his supervision. So about <coughs> six months after his appearance was the time for the Rathiatra. And the house where Bhaktivinoda Thakur was staying was a rented house on the main road, just maybe uh, half a kilometer from the Jagannath temple, little more than half a kilometer, just on the path where Jagannath's Rath Rath comes on the Rathiatra. And by Jagannath's desire, the Rath stopped right in, they were pulling it and it stopped right in front of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's residence. Yeah. So it stopped for three days. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur took the opportunity, he brought his wife with the young child who was called Bimala Prasad and took and took the child onto the rat and bowed him down at Jagannath's feet. And immediately a full of the uh, flower garland from Jagannath fell down and encircled the child. This child had been born with a mark on his body, just like this. Janaya, the, yeah, the yag, Yagya Pavitra, the Brahmanist thread. And Bhaktino Thakur had given him the name Bimala Prasad. He gave uh, all his sons, he had many sons, he gave them names of what appeared to be names of Durga with the name Prasad afterwards. So his first son was Anada Prasad, and then Lali, Lali, Prasad. Bimala Prasad, Lalita Prasad. But actually these are names not exactly of Durga. From the Vaishnava perspective they are understood as Shaktis of, of Vishnu. So in Puri, the, the Puri, apart from being the place of Jagannath, is also one of the Shakti Pitams. There are 64 Shakti Pitams spread throughout India. So the Shakti at Puri is known as Bimala. And the system there in the Jagannath temple is that after offering Bhog to Jagannath, Prasad is offered to Bimala and then distributed. Now Bimala is also the name of a gopi of Vrindavan. So this child, Bimala Prasad, he was growing up in the home of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in whose home the Govardhan Shila was worshipped. So as in any Vaishnav home, there no food is to be eaten by anyone without offering to the Lord first. So when this boy, Bhimala Prasad, was about four years old, Bhaktivinoda Thakur one day happened to bring some mangoes home. So the boy took one and ate it. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur reproved him. This is not correct. Everything should be offered to Govardhan first. So he was a young boy, a child, just a baby practically. But he said, oh, I have made a great offense. From today I shall never eat mango again. So for the apparent offense that he made in very early childhood, for that he never took mangoes in his whole life. Naturally, uh, in later life as a sadhu, so many people would bring mangoes. But he would say, I cannot take, I am an offender. So this uh, seriousness was from the very beginning of his life. Complete dedication to the, the complete surrender to Krishna. So there are so many anecdotes, so many teachings. This year, certainly, I have to publish my book that I've been compiling for many years on Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sar Thakur. Mm. It's uh, hopefully that will glorify him, 
What is that? Murkanit Chakudra Mui Bishayir Lalosh. Vaishnav Agga Bale Kari Eteka Shahosh. This Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami, in writing Chaitanya Charitamrita, he said that I am fallen, foolish, insignificant, and greedy for mundane sense gratification. Nevertheless, I am bold enough to write this book on the, on the strength of the orders received from the Vaishnavas. So Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur himself was very eager to <coughs> publish literature. He had a daily newspaper. He had several publications including a daily newspaper with, with, not, with reports of the lectures and they're all full of spiritual information. Another famous figure from the so-called Indian independence struggle was Madan Mohan, Madan Mohan Malavya. I think you all know his name from your school days, is it? Do you still teach you about him? Yeah. So he was appreciating Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Gandhi didn't appreciate thought, why are you taking these men for some spiritual purpose? You should give them for the freedom struggle. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur didn't agree. He didn't think it was very important that India get the so-called independence. He was actually uh, cooperating with the British. He thought, you know, if they don't disturb us, why should we disturb them? Actually, we're getting a little sidetracked here, but the Indian independence movement, it was presented as a spiritual movement. And Gandhi was, you know, he was like, he kind of posed as a sadhu and people thought his movement was very spiritual. Because one thing is, people were very hopeful that, that when India became independent, that they could ban cow slaughter, which all Hindus were, they were just very, very unhappy that this was going on. But what could they do? It was British rule. So when they got independence and they thought, okay, now let's stop cow slaughter. But Mahatma Gandhi said, no, you should allow it. Because it's the Muslims' religion and you have to allow it for the Muslims and Christians. <coughs> so anyway, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur was... He was not involved in politics and he uh, he cooperated with the British in as much as, they, you know, they're not harming us, so why should we be against them? So he opposed Gandhi in so many ways. Not directly, but uh, so many of his ideas. He was, I mean, this is... I mean, there are so many things. He opposed so many things. Just one example, I mean, he didn't only oppose Gandhi, but he opposed so many bogus things. But Gandhi wanted to call the the uh, the outcasts or the asprisha. He wanted to call them harijan to give some kind of spiritual eye that they're kind of very spiritual because they're poor. Poor and low class. Bhaktisiddhan Sashartakra said, why? Uh, this is a wrong use. Harijan means pure devotee. So anyway, Gandhi wasn't, he didn't like Bhaktisiddhan Sashartakra very much. But uh, Madan Mohan Malavya, he very much appreciated. Because he himself <coughs> had a lot of appreciation for Srimad Bhagavata. So once he, he saw that they're producing this daily newspaper, the Nadia Prakash. He said, how can you have a daily newspaper about spiritual subject? And Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati Thakur said that this one city of Calcutta, you're thinking it's very big, but it's only a little spot on the whole earth. And there are 13 daily newspapers in this city. Nowadays there are less, maybe five or six. So he said that this is, this whole material world is uh, it's only a tiny spot compared to the material world and Calcutta is only a tiny spot within the material world and still you have daily 13 newspapers. So the spiritual world is much bigger. There are much more activities there. So why definitely we can produce a daily newspaper. We can produce a newspaper every second about the spiritual world. Just there is a lack of hearers. Lack, lack of audience. So he produced... Uh, was, talking and writing and his followers were producing magazines and tremendous 
preaching Bye. mission. They yeah. stood against everything in the world except Krishna consciousness, which means everything in the world. He pointed out the faults in everything. In in his childhood, Bhakti Nau Thakur taught him how to operate the printing press. So he was an expert in printing technology. In the various printing presses, if anything went wrong, he knew how to fix it. So he used to say that Bhakti Nau Thakur trained me in proofreading. He said that I don't just proofread the type but I proofread people, I proofread religions, I proofread the whole world. If there's any mistake, I find it, I correct it. So he was doing that. And giving the highest conception, what is the spiritual world, what is service? His name was uh, Vrishabhanu Devi Vrishabhanu Dayatadas. So Vrishab. Uh, Vrishabhanu means, sorry, Vashabhanavi Dayatadas. Vashabhanavi means the daughter of Vrishabhanu. It means, it is a name for Radharani spoken by, suitable to be spoken by someone who is close to her but also respectful to her. A Dayata means who is very dear. So he's a servant of Krishna, who is very dear to Radharani, means a servant of Radha and Krishna. And uh, his actual purpose was to broadcast knowledge of, not just knowledge, but service to Radha and Krishna. Vidaye balila keva dayata dashara seva gopi dhana katha kirtan. His service, his eternal service, is broadcasting the glories of the treasure of the gopis. So, what is the treasure of the gopis? Krishna, and also Swarasiki Siddhi Braja Gopidhan Paramachanchala Shati. Also, the gopis, their treasure is their uh, individual serving attitude towards Radha and Krishna. That is, uh, it's contradictory, apparently, by its nature. It's very faithful, but at the same time, it's contrary. Jogera dheyan nirbhishesha gyan ekane na paistiti. This is completely not possible to understand by the yogi's meditation or the uh, imperc- cultivation of impersonal knowledge. His concepts are so high. His uh, his presentation of Krishna consciousness there was such respect for the divine couple, Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Uh, many people would criticize that you are promoting a slave mentality because you, you see the, uh, the the Indian independence movement. They were saying that the Indians they have this slave mentality because they accept the British as their rulers. And actually that's still going on. Indians think that anything foreign is better. Just like you're working for this company, they're importing clothes from America, which are actually made in Thailand and China. And they're shipped to America, shipped back here, and they sell the same shirt you can get in India for 100 rupees, and they're selling it for 3,000 rupees. Same quality. No Um, difference. Just like this Krishna Chaitanya, he's working for some company who they're selling clothes imported from America. They're actually made like in Taiwan and China and Thailand. But they're shipped to America and shipped back here. And people are buying for say 3,000 rupees one shirt. The same quality you can get here for less than 300 rupees. But because it's imported from America, people will spend 10 times more. Because it's touched by the sacred soil of America. So this slave mentality is going on. So they would criticize that you see you're all the time saying we're servants, we're servants, we're servants. It's not dignified. And by supporting the British Raj, you're also upholding this slave mentality. So Bhaktis Dhansasar Thakur, he gave a lecture that the Gorya Mat, his organization, that stands for the dignity of the human race. To be a servant of the Supreme Lord is the most dignified position. But foolish people, they judge in terms of material position. So, 
He gave a very, very high conception. Our own Srila Prabhupada, he presented the same thing, but you could say in many ways he made it more accessible. To he made us feel that, yes, you can take Krishna consciousness, it's very simple. You can, he always used to say, what is the difficulty? You just think of Krishna, chant Hare Krishna. Practically we're seeing that it's, it's not that easy. So many of those who took Prabhupada's gifts have not been able to, I mean, they've not sustained even the basic principles because it requires actually commitment and surrender. We have to give up all our own concepts and accept the Vaikuntha Vritti, the way of thinking of the spiritual world. In many ways, what Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur presented was in so many ways, revolutionary. People think that sadhu should be, you know, like extremely renounced, and he was, actually. Before yeah. founding the Gorya Mat, he was living, I mean, as an extremely renowned sadhu. But after accepting sannyas, which in itself was controversial, he would, when going for preaching programs, he would dress in nice cloth, what? ride in cars, Mix with big officials of the British government and, and kings. Prior to taking sannyas, he was, he was eating practically nothing, but then he arranged that there should be feasts, and he himself would take prasadam. Huh? So he did whatever was necessary for preaching. Huh? Even, you see, the British governor came out to Mayapur once. So he came with his whole group. So the British, they were accustomed to eating meat three times a day. So he arranged with a Calcutta hotel that in Mayapur, the land of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the, the British should be fed according to their needs. And he suggested that when they go to preach in London, they may have to do some similar arrangement because people, they won't come unless the, in the beginning unless they're fed according to their need. When one of his sannyasis protested that this would give a bad name to the Goryamat, Bhaktisiddhan Sarasar Thakur said, I've already considered this and decided this thousands of lifetimes ago. <laughs> so, it's not for us to try to measure him or understand him. One thing nowadays in ISKCON, um, we hear some people, they complain, oh, this isn't right, that isn't right, there are so many problems. And actually it's true. It's a big international organization with very high ideals. And in many places and in many cases, the high ideals are not lived up to. So some people have become discouraged and some have even become disgusted. But there's one incident which uh, is very in interesting to consider in this regard. How some of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur's leading devotees in his presence became discouraged and disgusted. Because the leading manager of the institution, who was a householder, he was embezzling funds. Mm -hmm. Everyone was going out and working hard and collecting funds for developing the preaching. And this uh, leader, he was pocketing a large amount of it. So one day, you know, all the sannyasis, they said, you know, we've had enough of all this. And... One of them was deputed to complain to Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So it's a very reasonable complaint, that, and uh, you would expect what well, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur would rectify it, he would remove that person. But when the complaint was brought to him, he became angry. He said, well, what, if he is, what if he is stealing? What if he is stealing? So what? If I had to employ such an expert manager, it would cost so much money. But anyway, that's not your concern. You came here to do bhajan, to do service. You didn't come here to make politics or any such thing. So your way of thinking is wrong. So it would seem that <coughs> that their way of thinking was right. But Bhaktisthan Sarasvati said, no, your way of thinking is wrong. So it may be difficult for us to understand. But the point he's emphasizing, we came here to worship Krishna. That facility is there. No one is stopping us from doing that. So, he was pointing that out. We haven't come here for any other purpose. Although he himself was very heavy in his lectures and about materially motivated devotees. But he never threw them out. 
He's, he would say sometimes that better they all go home, but he never told them to go home. He used to say, this is the hospital. If they're here, there's some chance of them getting better. Otherwise, there's no hope. So there are many important things we can learn. And uh, you please all pray to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur that if he is pleased that this presentation on him, this service and trying to perform at his lotus feet, may, may manifest in published form before too long. There are many, many things to say. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, when he gave lectures, would be generally minimum two hours, often three, four, five, six hours. I think today people, they don't have the patience to listen so much. In those days, people had more time and patience for all these things. Even then, you see, uh, not everyone would stay when he, for his lectures. But anyway, um, I'll finish here now. The glorification of him should go on. On, on his disappearance day, just uh, in December, I was in Bombay, I gave a, a lecture on him. And at the end, one devotee asked me, why is his pranam mantra so long? You see, for our Prabhupada, we have two mantras. For him, we have four. And I replied, that, what do you mean long? Even Ananta Shesh, in millions and millions of years, cannot finish glorifying Bhakti Sansasra Thakur. And you think that four shlokas is too long. That is only a very con extremely concise uh, elucidation or a extremely concise presentation of his unlimited transcendental glory. So let us give information of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur to the world. People, you know, people are so foolish. They know, they've heard of Sunil Gavaskar and Kapil Dev and, and uh, Tolukda, what's his name? Sachin Tendulkar and all these people. They never heard of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. No, People no, are no, such, no, no. such moodhas. You see, they're saying they want to get free from the British. What is this cricket game? It's also British nonsense. But they think, oh, India, our cricket team. It's, it's just some nonsense introduced by the British. People in India are so foolish. They have this tremendous culture of the spiritual world, but they're giving it up to become... Fools and rascals. Here in Ta Tamil Nadu itself, there's so many great devotees. How many, how many people in Tamil Nadu know even the names of the Alvars? I wonder if even everyone knows the name of Ramanuja. They know? Everyone's heard the name? Present generation never heard even of Ramanuja. So unfortunate. This Sri Parambadha, they have a big, big monument for this Rajiv Gandhi. <laughs> and the, the, the really important person is the Supreme Lord, the temple of Vishnu Divya Desham and, and Sri Ramanuja Acharya, and they don't know anything about it. So, you should. If you're, if at all you have any Indian patriotic spirit, then you should revive the real culture of India, which is the spiritual culture given by the Acharyas. Don't waste time. So many lives we've wasted serving, you know, our country, whichever country we happen to be born in, serving cats and dogs and buffaloes and horses and wives and mothers and sisters and in-laws and outlaws and all kinds of things. Now we should serve Krishna. Prati janme janme shabe pita mata pai Krishna guru nahe mele bhaja In every life we get father and mother. Cats and dogs, they also have fathers and mothers. But in this human form of life, we have the opportunity to, if we're fortunate, to get a bona fide guru and serve Krishna. So if we do that, we sh if we get that opportunity, we should take it and worship with all our heart. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Rama Hare Hare. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada who has given us the whole spiritual world.